Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for coming to Santa Barbara. Uh, I hope you, you all stay long and spend lots of money because we need your sales tax to support our offices. Uh, this morning, uh, let me just say uh, that, uh, give you a little game plan here in terms of what you can expect. Uh, I'm going to make a couple opening remarks to set down the process rules. Then I'm going to introduce uh, Sheriff Jim Anderson standing next to me, and Sheriff Anderson will make a uh, statement. Then uh, I have a few things to say from the legal perspective on the case that I think might help satisfy some of your answers. Uh, and then at that point, uh, the sheriff and I uh, are going to take questions. We will uh, take a reasonable amount of questions until it becomes uh, either redundant or we're out. And uh, at that point, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give you a warning like I guess they do on the real things. you got two more to say or something like that. So um, first of all, in terms of the process, um, as I indicated, the, the, the format will be the sheriff is going to talk, I'm going to talk, then we'll do the questions and answers. So I really would appreciate it, and I don't think this will be a problem because we, we're going to stick around, is to save your questions until after we've completed our, at least what we consider canned remarks or whatever you call it in your industry. Uh, secondly, um, although I, I realize, um, just like I hope some of most of you all realize, we have different roles and responsibilities in, in connection with what we do in this, and we all know that this is a very serious uh, situation, uh, that uh, we're not going to answer questions involving the specifics of this case and the timelines of this case or the names of the people involved in this case. I think probably most of you as veteran reporters understand the reason that we're not doing this. We're not trying to be difficult, but this is an ongoing investigation, and I think that's something that the sheriff and I feel very strongly about. So to the extent that you uh, try to do your jobs and pry that kind of information out of us, I think you're going to find us to be a, a tough sell. Uh, thirdly, um, in the future. Um, many of you have generously uh, called both the sheriff and I to appear on uh, all kinds of programs from, I won't even announce it, so I don't want to give many publicity, but all of the high prime, prime time uh, talk show uh, things. And uh, I want you to know, so that you all know, so you don't waste your time and your producer's time, anybody else's time, the sheriff and I are not going on any TV programs. Uh, we are not going to be making any public statements about this case except in a press conference format. All future information about the case will come out of Chris Pappas, which is the, Chris is the PIO for the Sheriff's Department, or uh, on the websites of either department. We both have websites. Uh, we're not trying to be difficult, but I think you have to understand the Sheriff and I have a responsibility to the citizens of this county. We have busy schedules in terms of what we're doing and the cases that we're handling and, and other investigations, and we just can't have our switchboards taken down by trying to answer press inquiries. I think we're trying to be reasonable and set up a process that can help you do your job while we can continue to do our job to protect the citizens of Santa Barbara County. And I hope you'll understand that. Um, so uh, without further ado, as they say, uh, I want to introduce to you uh, a good friend of mine and the current sheriff of Santa Barbara County, uh, Jim Anderson. Sheriff. Thank you, Tom. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Yesterday morning at around 8.30 a.m., investigators from the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department, Santa Barbara District Attorney's Office, served a search warrant at Neverland Ranch in Los Olivos. Simultaneous to the service of the warrant at Neverland Ranch, two search warrants were also served in Southern California. Approximately 70 investigators from the Sheriff's Department and the District Attorney's Office were involved in the service of this warrant at Neverland Ranch. The operation was concluded around 11 p.m. last night. The service of the warrants was part of an ongoing investigation alleging criminal misconduct on the part of Michael Jackson. The basis for this investigation regarding Mr. Jackson involves allegations of child molestation, 288A of the California Penal Code. Additionally, an arrest warrant for Mr. Jackson has been issued on multiple counts of child molestation. The bail amount on the warrant has been set at $3 million. At this point in time, Mr. Jackson has been given an opportunity to surrender himself to the custody of the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Department within a specified period of time. We are currently working with Mr. Jackson's legal representation on this matter. 
Mr. Jackson has also been directed to surrender his passport when he's taken into custody. While we appreciate the level of interest generated by this case, the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Department is committed to maintaining the integrity of this investigation with respects to both legal and ethical considerations. We will not be commenting on issues specific to the investigation beyond what has already been released. Thank you, Jim. Uh, let me just add a few things to what the sheriff has said from uh, the perspective of the district attorney's office. And uh, we do have some releases in writing that you can get, either they've been passed out already or you'll get them afterwards. Uh, commonly in these kinds of cases, uh, but let me clarify something because some of you aren't lawyers and I don't want you to get it wrong. There's a 288 and there's a 288A. There's a 288 paren small a, which is the child molesting section. 288A is another offense. Just so you all understand, we are talking about a violation of 288 paren small a, child molesting, not oral copulation of an adult or of, of children, okay? So that's, I want to clarify that so that you understand that. Secondly, ordinarily, uh, sometimes I'm a, uh, either my staff or myself are, are asked in cases like this what the penalties are. In California, we have the determinate <coughs> sentence. The determinate sentence means that the, the legislature set a time frame upon conviction if, worst case scenario, the judge decides to send a person to state prison. In this particular case, the triad is three years, six years, and eight years. So the minimum would be three, the maximum would be eight for the single count. We are filing multiple counts. So potentially, on the, if we get to the point where there is a conviction and a sentencing, the judge would have the discretion at that point to, to, to give multiple consecutive sentences and the limits on the judge at that point are one third of the middle term, which would be an additional two years, you can do the math, for each additional one consecutive. That is not mandatory, it's discretionary. I'm not suggesting to you that any of this could happen, but I'm asked routinely what is the, what is the outside worst case scenario, and I'm just trying to give you that. I don't want anybody to imply uh, from anything that I've said that, or any remarks that I've said that any one of those things is going to happen, uh, but that's just what the, what the sentencing uh, time frames are. Um, one thing I want to emphasize, and, I, and I'm, I'm saying this because um, I, I couldn't resist the temptation to watch a little bit of some of this coverage last night on TV. And I heard a lot of uh, apologists for Mr. Jackson say some things that I think we can, the sheriff and I can talk about that I think are important for you as the media and for the public who is going to hear these things to, to be told. I heard a lot of people saying it was deja vu. I heard a lot of people saying it was another ripoff by some family to get money. I want to make several things clear about why this is different from the last investigation. Number one, it is different because the law in California has changed, and it was changed specifically because of the 1993-94 Michael Jackson investigation. The law in California at that time provided that a child victim could not be forced to testify in a child molest proceedings without their permission and consent and cooperation. As a result of the Michael Jackson case, the legislature changed that law, and that is no longer the law in California. Secondly, as you all know, or most of you know, uh, either from being involved or knowing about that investigation, there were never any charges brought in that investigation. No warrant issued. There is a warrant outstanding, and I can assure you that within a very short period of time, there will be charges filed against Mr. Jackson, multiple counts. That's different. Third, at the time of the investigation, back, now I just hit somebody off, but uh, it's TV Aztec, whoever you are. I'm sorry, I apologize. Just got carried away here. I'll, it won't, there's no room up here. You folks have, uh, I don't worry, just, I'll just hang on. Let me hear then, then I don't have to worry about knocking any more off. Yeah. All, right. All right, third, here we go, third, is that at the time of the investigation in 1993 and 94, as, as those of you who have followed that know, there was a contemporaneous civil case that was filed by attorney Larry Feldman in Los Angeles and that that case was filed almost immediately at the same time that our office and the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office 
was notified of the allegations and, and we commenced our investigations. That civil case culminated prior to the completion of our investigation. And I say completion because at the time that that civil settlement went down, the victim indicated to us that they would no longer were no longer interested in cooperating criminally. There is no civil case filed and there is no anticipation that there will be a civil case filed in this particular case. And the last reason that this is different, in this particular case, we have a cooperative victim in, in this particular proceeding. So I think there's something to, some things that are very different about what's going on today and what, what occurred before. Um, another thing that I think that the sheriff and I are need I feel concerned that we want to uh, clarify about allegations that we've heard. Uh, there's been, uh, Jackson himself, I believe, has said that this was all done to try to ruin his new CD that was coming out or whatever it is he's doing. Like the sheriff and I really are into that kind of music. But, <laughs> but the fact of the, and all my kids are grown now pretty much, so, but, but the fact of the matter is, what you need to know is that in actuality, we had no knowledge of that prior to the time that we determined the date of the execution of this. And in fact, we were going to execute these warrants several weeks ago, but had to put it off because of all the visitors we had come up here, the 50,000 people that came in for Halloween. So it really has nothing to do with his album or whatever else he's doing in his life. We don't, we don't track him. So I think it's important for people to know that. We've been ready to do this for, for some period of time, and it was just a, an operational thing within the Sheriff's Department because of the tremendous manpower, that, the person power that they had to put out for the Halloween thing. And the last question before we'll op uh, open it up is, uh, I know you're probably going to ask some questions about Child Protective Services, both in Los Angeles and Santa Barbara. Uh, child Protective Services, um, at this point in time, is not involved in, this, in these investigations. Uh, there were some previous contacts by folks in the Los Angeles Child Protective Services involving some other things that came out when the uh, don't, don't assume from that I'm talking about the same family. I'm just telling you there was Child Protective Services involvement and other allegations involving Mr. Jackson in Los Angeles. And uh, there has been no involvement on in either one of those departments in any one of those things uh, uh, involving any of that information. This has solely been an operation run by the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Department and I have been advising them and the members of my staff have been advising them on the legal issues involved in the investigation. Whether they will get involved, uh, obviously the, the, there's going to be, uh, at least the local Santa Barbara people, where it's pertinent, will be notified of it. And what they do, they do. Uh, just so some of you who are really sharp understand, in Santa Barbara, the DA's office handles the 300 petitions. So we will be conflicting out of that and having the court request that they appoint other counsel so that there's no allegations that we're involved in, in that process and get information from that process. And it's an arm length. And, we build a firewall involved in that, so it's just a different thing. We will not be involved in that. There'll be separate counsel appointed to represent the Department of Child Services in Santa Barbara. Sheriff, did you have anything you want to add before we open them up? Just that we have uh, copies of the uh, news release this morning to provide to you, both from the Sheriff's Department and the District Attorney's Office. And now we'll go ahead and open it up for Could questions. Could be a flight risk? Why, Could he be a flight you? risk? There's always that potential. But we are actively pursuing the arrest warrant at this time. Why are you waiting to file charges? Are you waiting to see if, in fact, he cooperates and surrenders and vis a vis you have to go arrest him? Is no, it doesn't have anything to do with it. it, it, it filing the charges had nothing to do with that. It, it, um, I know it may, may seem, seem simple to people to get together in a search warrant for several different places and stuff like that, but it's just a matter of a decision that we made to do a Ramey warrant, an affidavit, get a judicial authorization, and it gives us time to go back and do the, the formal charging at another time. That's all it was. It was just no, 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 we're not going to discuss the time frame for the surrender. All right, all right, all right. We're going to go way in the back. Time. What are the time? I'm big, pardon? That's a that's a decision that would be made by a, a juvenile court. Where are the other two No. Sir, no, we do not. I beg your pardon? You mentioned two other search warrants back in Southern California. Yes, there, there were two other warrants. Uh, I'm not going to get into the detail of those, but we did serve two in Southern California. 
and we did uh, acquire additional property. Can you talk about what, when, where, why? It was yesterday, the same time as the search warrant was served here in Santa Barbara County. In general terms, sir, can you just talk about in general what you all were looking for? Uh, items of evidence that would corroborate the victim's statements. As much as you can talk about, can you say what you all believe happened and why the evidence was compelling we're, enough to issue an arrest warrant? We're, we're, not, we're not going to get into specifics of the case. <laughs> when did this 12-year-old parent uh, come we, forward? We wanna, were you notified? We want to no, clarify something. There is an affidavit in this particular case, and that affidavit has been sealed for 45 days and will not be released for 45 days in order for us to complete the investigation. When did this start? When did this start? Right, this gentleman here has a question. Yes. When, did, when did this start? When did this 12-year-old's parents come forward and notify him? Well, you assumed things that we haven't said, okay? So we're not going to answer that question. Sir, we learned that it was attorney Larry Feldman who caused the boy to come to the sheriff's office and talk to the DA's office. Can you confirm that your office has had discussions with, uh, with attorney Larry Feldman? No. You've asked him to surrender his passport. How realistic, realistically do you think it is that he might flee overseas? Well, there's always that possibility, but uh, I believe he's willing to cooperate with us and turn over his passport at this point. Sheriff, is Mark Garrett representing Mr. Jackson? Is, is Mr. Garrett representing Mr. Jackson today? I, I believe that is correct. That's what was represented to me in my conversation with him. You said this was multiple counts over what period of time did this occur? We're not going to discuss that. We're not going to discuss that. Have children been taken into protective custody already? What children? His own children. They're not within the, at this point in time, they're not in California. Is there a possibility of any other victims, just one gentleman? Yes, there, there is that possibility, and we would encourage the public to come forward if they have any information whatsoever that would lead us to believe there are other victims in the community to contact us so that we can follow up on that information. Gentlemen, how many counts are these multiple counts only involving the one child? This, this, I'm not going to answer that. This, this lady right here with her hand up in the white. You'll know about it when it gets there. How many are you given special treatment because of this arrangement to turn yourself Hold on. in? John, you're the worst person to be asking that question because you know in this county that we have traditionally done that for other people as a courtesy. Would you do it for the, any member and of the And we've public? done it for other people and we're not any doing anything different. You know that. Would you do it for any member of the public? An we have. to turn themselves in depending so on the they don't be seen with handcuffs on Depending on, we uh, haven't on said a case-by-case case basis. Are you confident yes. that your victim's willing to testify this time? Yes. Why are you confident in the documentary? You mentioned multiple what? counts. How many counts are How there? How many counts? I'm not going to say. And why won't you say that if there's one, more than one child now or not? Why? I'm not. Will there be a charging document right released? Right now, is, yes, is when we name? file it. So oh, hold on, hold on. This gentleman back here. Is the district attorney's office right now in any sort of deal making with Michael Jackson's attorneys, whoever is the name of the office? Is there any sort of deal talking about a surrender, a possible deal, anything like that? A deal to, to, to sur surrender himself or a deal? Uh, yeah. oh. Well, let's talk about both. <laughs> I wouldn't comment on either one of those, but we've been in contact with his lawyer. Is he in Las Vegas that you've been hearing? I'm sorry? I don't know. I, I mean, we really have a life other than Michael Jackson, and we've been we've been really trying to work on our investigation, as you well know, because I saw it on TV before I came down here. The last word I had on somebody standing out front of a hotel was that he was still there, but then there was some other people who said they saw him leave last night. So that, you get these conflicting testimonies. Mr. About what's going on. Sir, you have dealt with the Jackson case for so long. I'm I have been involved with this case. Hold, hold on a second. Let him ask. You've dealt with this case for a number of years. You were involved ten years ago. Can you talk about your satisfaction in finally bringing Michael Jackson, in your mind, to justice? And can you talk about? Do you feel he has a problem dealing with children? All right. First of all, uh, I haven't been dealing with Michael Jackson for anything. When that case went to bed ten years ago, it was out of my mind. You folks and people keep calling every time he does a bizarre thing to ask me my comment about it, but. I have, I really do have a lot of things going on as does the sheriff and this former sheriff and, and people in my office. We really have a very busy office. I haven't given it a passing thought. Uh, my feelings about this is that, that I'm sad that there is another victim out there. I feel bad for the, for the family. I feel bad for the victim. Beyond that, I, I, I think it's, it's a sad thing for all the people involved in this thing. Quite, 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 quite. Isn't, there a, isn't there a sense in your 
office and perhaps he bought his way out of those charges 10 years ago, and now you may have the goods. Did, did he bought his way out? Is, is there a sense in your office that he bought that? that I think charges? there's a sense in the public he did that. I went, well, I've, I've laid off on me, me in my office. <laughs> oh, hold on, this, this lady back here. Go ahead. Las Vegas, but does the, does the law She call answered your them? question for you. She answered. So, but does the law call for them to be taken into protective custody as a matter of course if his father is under arrest for molestation charges if he returns to California? Not necessarily. If they return not, to California. Not at this point in time, no. Wait a minute. You can have, you can have a father charged with sexual abuse of a minor and leave the children in the home with that father? Everyone is innocent until convicted. Is it child or boy or a girl? I'm going to talk about that. Sure. Well, you, you can tell from the charges it has to be a child. Wait, hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Sure. I'm a little confused. If you had 70 guys out of this ranch, you didn't know where Michael Jackson was yesterday, and if you considered this to be a possible flight risk, why would you not have known? We, we had an idea where he might be. Uh, that wasn't confirmed yesterday morning. Uh, yesterday evening, there, there was additional information that came to our attention that uh, he was coming back to the state of California. But beyond that, we have no additional information at this point in time. Hold on. Will you compel him to testify if he becomes uncooperative? No reason to answer that question. Mr. Stedden, did you find anything you were looking for? We're not going to comment on that. I, I, will, I will say this, excuse me a second, on the gentleman's question, I think we, the sheriff and I probably feel pretty comfortable saying this much. One of the things that, you know, there's been a question about why so many people went there and why we were there so long. One of the things that you have to, some of you are familiar, just looking at the aerials, that's a, that's a pretty huge complex. And we were authorized by the court to go in and video inside and out all of the buildings on the, on the premises. And, and just, if you can imagine how long it took just to complete that process. Beyond that, we're not going to talk about anything else that was done out there at the, at the premises. Oh, oh, hold on a second. I'm sorry? Will a UFAP unlawful warrant to avoid prosecution warrant be issued if he does not return to California? Of course. Yes. Mr. Sneddon, will you prosecute this yourself? What's the Will you prosecute this yourself? Yes, but uh, not by myself. Okay. There'll be another lawyer from my office assigned to the case. Would you be the lead chair on a case like this? I know your retirement's coming up. Would be, this be this, the last big case for you? <laughs> Not necessarily. Uh, I, and, and I wouldn't be the lead attorney when I do things with people in my office, which I've done before. We do it as co-counsel, as colleagues. Okay. Over here. Over here. Have you sent sheriff's deputies to Las Vegas? No, we have not. We, we, have, we have been in communication with Las Vegas, but our personnel are not there at this time. Does your application surrender to California or can you surrender it out of state? Can you surrender in Nevada? I think the sheriff made that pretty clear where it was. Is this going to be an expensive prosecution investigation for your, for your county, and how are you going to handle that given the state's problems? It's our job. If Michael Jackson's watching this right now or his people, your opportunity to tell him what you'd like, should he see? Get over here and get checked in. <laughs> we would in, we would encourage him to turn himself in and cooperate with law enforcement. Yes. Hold on a second. There was a question here. The, the warrants served in Southern California were they homes or were they businesses? Uh, we're not going to comment. Did you see uh, the uh, brochure? Back, back here. Back here. Gentlemen, back here. You guys say that you're open to other possible victims coming forward. Do you have knowledge? this point of other possible victims that may be included in this case. No comment at this point. How long have you been working on this case? How far back is this case? It's just been an ongoing investigation. We're not going to get involved until I give you a timeline. I think I made that pretty clear. Not going to talk about that. Did you want to get involved in long way to go before we get there.
don't only take certain things, but just give us a sense of like, did they call you? Did you call them? What was that whole, how did that whole thing happen? Well, it has already been reported, and as probably many of you saw, uh, I talked to Steve Cochran at the gate yesterday afternoon for a brief period of time. Very cordial conversation. I know Mr. Cochran, Steve Cochran, from before and from some other things. Um, we get along very well. And then uh, later yesterday afternoon when I got back to my office, the other gentleman called me. Again, we had a very cordial conversation. And beyond that, I, uh, I'm not at liberty to disclose those conversations. Sure, this, 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 this person here. Hold on. Hold on. This person here. Go ahead. I'm not going to comment on that either. Okay, now, now your question. It's a legitimate question, but we're not going to comment on it. Could you just clarify what is the actual, is there an actual time deadline before you say Mike Jackson has cooperated and we're going to go after? Uh, uh, no, there is not. Well, yes, there is. I'm sorry. We're not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> I thought you were going to ask me a different question. That's why I was thinking. Is that lady in the You're working in Santa Barbara now. You got to put away the past and get with the future. Yeah. <laughs> sure. 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 Hold, hold on, hold on, just a second. This No, no comment. They had big attorneys last time. Mr. Smith, would you have allowed another individual accused of? This kind of a crime to turn themselves in, or do you go after them? I would say that my answer is the same as I gave before. We've done it before, and we do it again in the appropriate situation. What is the sir, appropriate sir, 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 what is the appropriate situation sir, for, for giving somebody the extra time to surrender? What is the, what is the criteria that you use? I'm not going to get into that. Sure. 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 How long has this investigation been going on for? How long has this investigation been going on for? We answered that already. And why was that to get a fair trial here in Santa Barbara? Why not? Spark the investigation. What exactly sparked it? Did you get a phone call? Did you someone tip you off? I mean, you've been investigating this for two or three months. What led to this enormous, massive investigation and search yesterday? Well, like, like in any other criminal investigation, we have to have someone who's a victim come forward and present the information to law enforcement. That's what begins the process for the investigation to start. Sure. And when sure. did that happen? Two or three months they made ago? That to you we're, way, or? We're, we're not going to get into the timeline. Did the victim come to you by himself or with his family? How did that come about? You know, people have asked that now about six different ways, and I think it's pretty clear we're not going to disclose the Los Angeles any Police of that Department information. involved in this case as well in serving the search warrants out in Century City? No. No. Sure. Was, was there a hearing to seal asked. the search warrants? I'm sorry? Sure. Was there a hearing to seal the search warrants? No. Well, yeah, I guess there was. There was a judge, and there were people there, but it was... As is always the case when you ask for sealing, it's it's the sure. the information sure. hold, hold the information has to be put in the search warrant to justify it, and then the judge makes it. It's a it's a judicial decision. It's not ours. Yes. 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 Right. Right here. Question. It's well known that Michael Jackson is always surrounded by servants and bodyguards, and I'm not questioning uh, your investigation. I'm trying to understand how the molestation of a child could happen with all of those kinds of people around him all the time. Might you be filing charges against other people that work for Michael Jackson? I can't comment on that at this point in time, but uh, we are con continuing a criminal investigation. Sure. Have you questioned people close to Michael Jackson about their association with this victim that came forward? I'm not going to comment on the specifics of the investigation. What about the Pelican? Sheriff, I talked yes. to the Pelican. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I right here. Question yet. Sheriff, are you going to be serving us members of the media lunch after this press conference? <laughs> <laughs> we, you we, evidently we, don't know about our budget crisis. Yeah, we have a budget problem. No comment. Uh, in the back here, in the back. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk to you generically because these things, there is some uh, give and take in these things, so I don't want anybody to take this as a, as a uh, absolute thing that's set in concrete. 
Ordinarily, let's just put this case aside and talk generically about situations where we've allowed people to, re to surrender themselves before with their lawyers and get booked and fingerprinted, is that they are given, and if they make the bail that's set by the judge, uh, then they are uh, cited to appear in court on a certain date in the future, and that citation date can be anywhere from probably uh, 30 days to 45 days. At that point, then uh, the district attorney's office must have on file a formal criminal charging document at the time that the individual is brought or comes to court pursuant to that citation release. That is the, the initial date for appearance for arraignment. And as many of you who cover other notorious cases that in the past and that are going on in the future know that in many instances, the defendant and his attorney will appear for the first time and continue the arraignment and not enter a plea immediately but do so at a sub subsequent date. That's generic. That's what happens generically. I cannot tell you what's going to happen at this point because Mr. Jackson is not in custody. Is this, uh, that question back here. Five days to charge him from the date that, in this case, from the date that he surrenders, you don't have to file charges for 45 days? Generically, in the scenario I just gave you, it gives us up to about 45 days if we seek to do that. It doesn't mean we have to. And, and in your sense, in this case, on. Uh, general sense, what, how long you'll probably take you? I, I think I made it clear in the press release that we intend to do something there, very there, soon. There's a, there's a question in the back here. Question in the back. Will there be a condition of Mr. Jackson's bail that he not have contact with minors after he's taken into custody if he makes bail, assuming? That'll be one of the things that'll probably be brought up at the bail hearing, if there's a bail Would hearing. You suggest that? It's under consideration. How do you respond to those who say you have a personal vendetta against Mr. Jackson? I'm sorry? How do you respond to those who say you have a personal vendetta Well, I mean, I could tell you it's BS, but, you know, that doesn't going to change people's observations. And I think the other way is if you want to check with people who know me, they know better than that. I got a life, you know. I got things I do and I enjoy doing. I, I'm not going to focus on okay. this. This lady back here. No, we're not going to comment on no, that. No, we won't Can comment I ask on that. Sir, how strong a case you feel you have, if you want to characterize it, and how serious are these charges in your mind against Mr. Jackson? The first one I'm not going to answer because okay. we never answer that. The second one is, I don't even remember the second part of it. How serious yeah. do you think? We, well, we, we wouldn't be here if we didn't think we were serious about know, this. Geez, in the back. Serious allegations. In the back. As a man who has spent his life and put his husband around kids, that you have two, two part of questions. On a personal level, how do child molestation charges do that make you feel spend your life around kids and support and coaching them? And B, what would you tell those kids that you coach now when they ask you about the situation? Well, how do I feel? I, it, it doesn't just people that I've been around and coached and families I've known and things like that. I, I, I think it's a, it's a devastating thing to a child this age. And I'm not talking about this case. I'm talking about any case. You know, I... There's an assumption that this is the only child molest case we handle. We handle cases like this all the time. It's a, it's a tragedy for the families involved and the victims involved, generically. So there's nothing different about that. And what I tell them is the same thing I would tell them as one of my own kids. Okay. This gentleman over here. Sir, uh, is the investigative work basically completed, and, or is it a possibility we may see other search warrants executed? It's not completed at this point. It's an ongoing investigation, and we're following up on, on, on information as we speak. What, what about the search warrants? Uh, there's always that possibility. Sir, how yes. long could Mr. Jackson go to jail for in total? Well, it depends on uh, whether or not he's convicted, number one, and number two, what he's convicted of and how many counts, and, uh, you know, all of those things Maximum. have to be factored Maximum. in. Maximum. Uh, it could go from anywhere from three to eight years, I think. Have you ever heard of a child-less yeah. uh, case like this with a $3 million bail? Is that, is that higher than the normal, or how does it compare? <coughs> Uh, I would have to say that it's uh, way up there, um, w and uh, but not unprecedented. How did you come and up with I, that? I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> Patience. Uh, and I think uh, that you have to understand that the function of setting bail is not simply a district attorney's request. It's a function of the judge and how the judge feels comfortable with the individual involved and the charges involved, because the judge is familiar with the allegations, having read the affidavit in support of the arrest and search warrants, and. Um, as you know, uh, some of you, uh, we, have a, we had a case down in Ventura where somebody posted a million dollar bail and took off and they found him down in Mexico after a long search. 
So I think with that and other situations involved, I think that was factored into the judge's decision to set it at three million. What have you done to prevent? Okay, we're we're going to go here. This next question. Two part question. What exactly did you find at the estate? And can you just go back? I think we're getting time to leave. Yeah, that's about that. That would help your case that you think was strong evidence. But also this this law that you talked about that changed. If you could just maybe talk a little bit more about that. We're not, we're not going to comment on the specifics of the case or what we found at the ranch. And the, the law has changed so that uh, the victim will be required to testify even if there were a civil settlement of some, of some case. Uh, there is no civil case at this, at this point in time. Yes? You made uh, special arrangements for Jackson's incarceration? I'm sorry? Have you made arrangements for Jackson's incarceration? Not at this point, no. Sure. Excuse me, there's a, there's a lady back here, right way here. in the back. Yeah. Gosh, it took a long time for somebody to get around to that one. <laughs> well, we haven't ruled anything out. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, you uh, say? We're not going to get involved in discussing anything about the case. Just oh, okay, and this lady right here. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, our press information officer, Chris Pappas, has that information. So he's here in the room somewhere. So we'll, we'll get that to you. Right. Hold on, hold on. Second part. Yes, that has been our past practice. So if if and when that occurs, we will make that I'm photograph sure available. That you, I want to make sure this is correct. Would it be fair to say, based on what you said before, that you have not ruled out charging other people? Is that a fair statement? Yes, anything is possible. Are you aware of other civil cases that have been handled outside of the media since 93 that were kept quiet? Not to my knowledge. Really? Yes. There's, there's, well, yeah, I am. You are? <laughs> yeah. How many? I, I'm... Ask Diane. She knows everything about Michael Jackson. <laughs> How are you aware of those? I read the papers once in a while. Uh, oh, hold on. Oh, oh. Uh, we're way, we're, we've got a long way to go hold before on. we get there. All right, this, this lady right here. Probably different than yours when you were in there. Can you tell us what you Hold on. We're, we're, we're going to do, question. do two more two, questions two more. and then we're out of here. One right here. I really couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you either. I don't know. What do you, last, what do you last say, question. Last what do you question. Say to parents who let their children go to Neverland Ranch on sleepovers. What is your? <laughs> my my advice is don't do it. <laughs> None of our kids are there. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Hold on, please, please. This is a technical question. Yeah, I understand. That concludes the uh, press conference. I have some prepared statements. If you'd like to get copies of those, I'll make those available to, to you. Thanks for your cooperation. Chris, right here. This is going to be interesting. Can we set up a line? Pull it out of the tank.
Here's the other one. Does anybody need the second one? Sure. Why not? We have a live shop pending. I know, I know. Yeah.